they're not feeding their ego. Exactly. They're, they're trying to suppress it. Yes, as women, I know that every day we're told that we need to blend into the wall. Mm -hmm. If you have a personality, an individuality, a sense of direction, you're frowned upon. Yeah. Which it baffles me still today. Like yeah. you're frowned upon for having a sense of self. Africa. wonderful peoples welcome back so this interview is long overdue my next guest is a young female Rwandan entrepreneur born in Congo raised in Rwanda educated in India and the US and then came back to Rwanda where she's currently the founder and CEO of imagine we Rwanda a social enterprise and the publishing house with the aim of growing the reading culture in Rwanda she started her entrepreneurial journey at only the age of 22, but has conquered so many challenge, challenges along the way that has made her into the seasoned entrepreneur that she is right now. Her hard work and long-term vision of empowering the youth of Rwanda has not gone unrecognized though. She was recognized by Jeanette Kagame, the first lady of Rwanda, and by the greatest president of America, Barack Obama. She also earned numerous awards from organizations such as UK Aid, the Imbuto Foundation, UNFPA, Tigo, the World Bank, just to name a few. When she's not busy running her company or writing and publishing her own books, she's also a co-host of a very fascinating and almost controversial podcast called Breaking Silences, where she talks about a lot of cultural and often personal subjects that many Rwandans don't dare talk about. Highly recommend you give it a listen. It is linked below this video. After spending only an hour interviewing her for this interview that you're about to see, I could not check the feeling that this girl is onto something big. My wonderful people, please help me welcome a lady who does not like flowers, I mean, she hates flowers, an innovator, a motivational speaker, author, publisher, sister from another mother and father, and a prime example of Rwanda's next generation leaders, Dominique Wase Alonga. Enjoy. And oh yeah, check out the giveaway at the end of this video. So, Nikki, you're kind of a big deal actually in Rwanda. Not that a lot of people, some people know it, but the people who know it, know it very well. Right. Yeah. And also, from my experience, because I, I just, I found you on the internet, some, some Rwandan girl sitting next to Obama, I was like, oh, that's interesting. And then once you deep dive, and then you find like, okay, there's a, there's a whole world behind her. Right. So. Right. Basically, for the people who are watching, the people who are listening, in just a few words, like who is Nikki Dominique? I would say. Dominique. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, my name is Dominique Alonga, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know. I think right now I identify as a, as an entrepreneur, uh -huh. and uh, cute. Yes. Yeah. Um, so right now I identify as an entrepreneur. I I like studying things. I think I was telling you earlier. Mm -hmm. um, I'm currently the founder of Imagine Me Rwanda and Imagination. Yes. Um, yeah, but I'm running a couple of things on the side, and one day they'll earn the title of founder of. Uh -huh. Right now they're just side gigs. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And your entrepreneurship is one of the, you know, striking thing about you because you are quite young. In real life, you look even younger, actually. <laughs> so, uh, so what drove you to kind of start the entrepreneurship at just such a young age? I don't know. Like, okay, so I have to say genuinely when I started, I didn't think, hey, I'm going to get into the world of entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. It was, I think it was thrust onto my life. Yeah. Because when I started, I just wanted to create a program that would last three months. Uh, okay. I tell everybody, like, I, I still told my boss, hey, I'm going to be back in three months. You yeah. know? So then it picked up and then it needed some bureaucracy, needed to be organized. And I was like, oh my gosh, this thing kind of works. Let's yeah. start something else on the side, mm -hmm. you know. And so that's how slowly, uh, but I was never like, oh, in 2015, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. 
So yeah. Lots of people start differently, and I think that's the beauty of, of everybody's stories. That's true. Uh, being in the field that you are in, you know, the the publishing, yes. you love books, apparently. Yes. Uh, that's why you probably work in it. Yes. Um, it is also fascinating when you meet people who love books, they have a, like a lot of deep knowledge about certain stuff. So that's why... I have a lot of deep knowledge. Yes, that's how I call it. Sorry, that's my slang. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, yeah, you find out in a minute why. Um, so, uh, um, so yeah, listening to you and also because of your your podcast, there are some things that you say that require kind of like second thought. Like, oh, wait a second, that's some kind of like refreshing views that you don't hear on your everyday discussion board. Right, right. Um, one of the things that I found very interesting was your talk about uh, about ego. Like in several talks, you talk about the ego, yes. and this is something that is not really um, that I don't hear a lot from women, yeah. unless they are referring to men. Right. You know, yes. but you talk about your ego. Yes. Yes. Can you elaborate a bit on that? Uh, I have an ego. <laughs> um, anyway, so I, I, I live in my head. Yeah. I think it's very, it's become my safe space. Um, mm -hmm. I'm learning to rely on myself and to embrace who I am, mm -hmm. which means I have to go back. Yes. and live inside of my head and I started realizing that there's lots of things about me that I defend that I don't necessarily need to defend mm -hmm. and um, ego is not always bad I think my ego is what drives me forward is mm -hmm. what pushes me to defend myself when I can't but it is also the very thing that makes me harm other people yes. and, and, and I do that quite a lot okay yeah. um, but ego helps me take risks it helps me pull out this other sense of self that I wouldn't have had if I didn't discover that I have an, uh, a personal pride mm -hmm. to feed but also to fight for so yeah. um, I, I've grown up in a space where pride was a terrible thing okay. where self reflection was a bad thing mm -hmm. you know you don't seek out yourself you seek out some something else yeah. so then I was scared entering into this space of self-knowledge and self-discovery. Mm -hmm. But it's been a gift and it's been my source of strength um, for the last couple of years. And uh, yes, the path of self-discovery is one that is very amazing. Yes. To you, what, is, what has been the biggest source of discovery that you have these, discovered on this path of self-discovery and, uh, and growth? The biggest thing was that I can take every absolute truth, mm -hmm. break it apart, and if it comes back together, yeah. then that thing is worth giving my life for. But if it doesn't, mm -hmm. I am not obliged to follow it, even yeah. if millions of people are following it. Yeah. So it has really helped me give, you know, it's given myself the permission to say, okay, so he just said that that's the color yellow. Uh, yeah, no. And then I break it up. Yeah. If it comes back, mm -hmm. it's worth believing. If yeah. it doesn't, I have the freedom to walk away from it. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's powerful in a way. And um, you know, um, stepping back to the to the ego part, um, it is. It sounds very familiar the way you describe it because I like myself. I grew up with guys and egos oh. prevalently you know yeah. there you know so it was like yeah you have to dim it down actually yeah. but uh, i like the fact that you elicit that it's not all bad mm -mm. and it's not uh, so in what ways has it like uh, given you some kind of like uh, i don't know other better word but like some kind of advantage on let's yeah. say other women because yeah. women do not they're not feeding their ego exactly they're, they're trying to suppress it yes as women i know that every day we're told that we need to blend in to the wall. Mm -hmm. If you have a personality, an individuality, a sense of direction, you're frowned upon. Yeah. Which, it baffles me still today. Like, yeah. you're frowned upon for having a sense of self. Mm -hmm. So, um, the way it's given me a few steps ahead, you know, because it's not necessarily uh, a privilege, it's just I'm a little bit ahead, is that um, when I... I have a sense of direction. I get into a conversation knowing my worth. Mm -hmm. And because I have a backup, I have a financial backup plan. I have an emotional backup plan, which mainly is my company and the strong friendships around me. Mm -hmm. I'm not necessarily too afraid of losing you as a partner, or of losing a business partner, or losing whatever. Mm -hmm. So I go in my full self. Yeah. You know, so that self then 
is is strong and is very assertive mm -hmm. and it's it just i just know what i want and mm -hmm. if you're not in that line mm -hmm. you know so for instance it was very hard for me to say one of the things society asks me mm -hmm. that after i get a call and i'm told that you're going to sit with obama mm -hmm. society asks me to shrink myself mm -hmm. as a woman i am out you know and acts like oh i didn't deserve it oh my yeah. god you know that's what society asks me that's what we call humility right mm -hmm. but then i looked at it and i was like i'm here yeah i'm here if i went through the security hurdles and researches that they did that means i deserve to be here i need to walk into that room knowing that i deserve to be there not shrinking myself if they didn't shrink me why do i need to shrink myself further so i guess that's just coming back to self and say okay nikki what do you think beyond yeah. society what are you thinking and where are you going to walk now? and do you think that that kind of trait is something that is inherent like just genetic in you that you always kind of had that grown up with something that you can cultivate it's something that i am cultivating strongly okay. yes all right oh. that is surprising yeah. to hear because looking from the outside in you would think oh that's how she is period that's just how she was so that's how yeah. God made her like that, and so um, I guess that's also part of growing up and and and, and yeah. taking risk and maybe yeah right. the, the ego does does help about it. Um, the other things that I did find Kenny about you, this I, I got from your podcast, uh, I believe, is that you are very much for um, for women, and actually everything that you say, you kind of like reference, especially for women. But then there are these things that you kind of find that they are not very feminine about you. Like let's say you don't like flowers. And I hate flowers. Yeah, exactly. No, I didn't want to say that. <laughs> I want to do that. To me, that was like the. No. That was the first time hearing. I like plants. Okay. I don't What's like the difference? Flowers. The reason why I feel flowers have become a thing that people give to women mm -hmm. is they have a fragility about them. Uh huh. When you receive flowers, you know they would. They're fragile. Yes. These plants withstand the sun, mm -hmm. the rain, the drought, mm -hmm. and every other thing. Mm -hmm. I like referring to myself or learning from plants mm -hmm. <laughs> rather than flowers. So every time I'm like seeing someone and they're interested in making me feel special, I'm like, get me a notebook or a pen yeah. or a sticky notes or stationery. Yeah. Don't give me flowers. But have, have people ever told you that you have like this boyish character? Yes. Yeah? And does that offend you? Yes. Why? Um, because somehow, um, again, it comes back to, to strength, right? Mm -hmm. Knowing what you want, uh, being independent is mm -hmm. characters that we take away from women. And yeah. women have to reclaim them. Yeah. I, I'm not a boy, so I didn't have to copy a boy yeah. to, to, to have these characters. Yeah. I just trained myself because as a human being, they helped me express myself. Yeah. But then women, the more you say, oh, that's, you're a tomboy, I get that a lot. Mm -hmm. um, then women who don't want to be like me feel like these traits, I shouldn't have them. Yeah. And then they forfeit um, even the benefits of having them in normal life. You yeah. know? So I'm not a pink kind of flowery person. I remember there's a time my mom used to say, go out there and buy a shirt that has flowers on them. And I'm like, first of all, how are you going to force me to buy a shirt that has flowers on them? Uh, but, um, maybe that's where you hate for flowers to begin as a child. <laughs> I was like 17. But um, I think sometimes we separate traits, mm -hmm. characters and qualities into genders. Mm -hmm. They don't necessarily have to be like that. Yeah. So the, on the other hand, it takes man in a risk zone it tells them if you if you feel attached too much or if you love stuff or if you if you are um, emotional if you cry mm -hmm. then you're being a girl whereas that's something that he has as yes. a man so that is dangerous that's just bad i don't take it as a compliment at all mm -hmm. I, i take it quite as a uh, it's not okay yeah and do you say something about it like in the moment or is it something that you maybe like later Best on? Let's believe I say something about it in the moment. Okay. Mm. And ha <laughs> has that like for yourself been the best way to kind of solve this solution or do you think that there's like a better way to mitigate it? I think it? it's, it's really okay to 
to, I call it nip it right away. Mm -hmm. Like if I see something, if someone says a comment that's direct, or, mm -hmm. I'm not going to wait to write a blog. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to say, hey, by the way, that's not cool, that's me. Yeah. And then if they try to say, oh, how come? Then they've welcomed me into a conversation, yeah. not a confrontation. Yeah, just exactly. Like, by the way, did you know that this came from ABC? Yeah. Do you know that this is hurtful in ABC ways? So then it's just like, yeah. But I can't just walk away and smile. <laughs> uh, that's okay. Yeah. No, it's not okay. Yeah. I have to call it out. Yeah, no, it, it, it is interesting because most of the women have this. Okay, maybe I'm generalizing. You should, you know, call me out on that. But have this kind of like what I sense a fear of confrontation. Mm. So they, when yes. when you say something, I know, like I know, guys, you know, who can be insensitive about yeah. certain stuff, and you say you're just ignorant about it. Yeah. But then the woman's like, I'm not gonna say something. Yes. You know, and then she's gonna go home and gonna cry about it. Talk yeah. to the other women, not the guy, none yes. of the guy friends. Yes. You know. Um. So how do you get to that power to kind of like? Uh, uh, say nip it as you said yes. in the moment just say yes. something about it without being confrontational about it because that's what most um, women are afraid of I don't know sometimes it depends on the frame of mind that I'm in but one of the things that really has helped me and the things that I'm passionate, that I'm passionate about is building your backup plans mm -hmm. is very important so it, as Africans uh, we are still in the mentality of I, I many communities at least, they are yeah. still in the mentality uh, of survival, yeah. right? So when you are in a mentality of survival, the next person is always potentially a savior, mm -hmm. right? So I meet you and if I know that, okay, today, whatever I do with you today, I will meet you again tomorrow and I'll need you, mm -hmm. then it affects how I treat you today. Yeah. So we still have this survival mentality, oh, my child might have uh, an accident and you're right mm -hmm. there. So then we are, it, it, help, it, it makes us want to please everyone mm -hmm. and that's very dangerous, right? Yeah. So when you create a space where you know even tomorrow I'll depend on myself, then I don't have to say, oh, maybe when I have my child has an accident. Mm -hmm. No, you know if your child has an accident, you have the right tools to help your child. So you'll be more honest with this person today. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's what has helped me to just look at it and be like, why are we like that? Why were we trained to treat people like that? Treat mm -hmm. people with fear in the name of respect. Treat yeah. people with self-sacrifice mm -hmm. in the name of being good. Yes. So then when I started exploring that within my own head, I was like, oh, by the way, I don't like that. I don't need to be like that. So yeah. it gave me that freedom to start expressing mm -hmm. who I truly am, what I truly believe. And then it also gave me the freedom to start mingling and hanging out with people who are in the same line of calling things out that are wrong, mm -hmm. of, of, of just not being afraid of other people. Yeah. And, and, and I find that in your talks in your communications that I found on the internet at least you are very much for the women pro women you know like yes. yeah like what 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 motivated you to be the I guess you're a woman but more than that right exactly what motivated me I think I, I think a close look at culture yeah. has really motivated me to say more people have to see that something is not okay, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so I think we are in a space where women are supposed to believe that they're secondary beings. Mm -hmm. And when I looked at everything I was able to do, not even just me, my mom is my biggest inspiration. I was raised by a single mom. Mm. And looking at how she's been able to get me to this point, mm -hmm. I was like, why is she going to be called a secondary citizen yeah. when she is, and all the women that raise their kids, you yeah. know, and we still have to take this tag that we're not as good because of we got we were born with the wrong genitalia. Yeah. And I was like, wait, that's got that's off. So that's just off. Yeah. So then we started work, um, and it all started again also with self-esteem issues. I grew up with heavy self-esteem issues, body image issues, all sorts of issues, and mm. and my response was teach other girls not to be like that. And the more I interacted with girls and I saw that these things were, had very specific reasons, mm -hmm. 
I was like, man, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta do something bigger about this. Yeah. So I think that's where the inspiration came. But on the other side as well, I am also starting to learn that the young boys that are responding into this harmful behavior are taught the behavior. So how do we give them another option? Hey, you can be cool mm -hmm. by being nice. You can be cool by, but by, by being attached, emotionally yeah. present. Exactly. You know, so it's not just like I'm an all woman hate man kind of person. <laughs> it's just bridging these gaps. Yeah, exactly. No. Um. And uh, but yeah. So talking about you being a young girl. Um. So you grew up in Rwanda. If yes. I if I if I if I get it correct. And one of the things that you know you talk about is the you know post genocide of Rwanda in yes. in Rwanda, and these are like talks that um, that uh, we don't hear a lot from, especially from the young people yes. who grow up. Uh, so you have this adult view, mm -hmm. what happened, and, but you are more like um, how you call it, vivid about it. You also talk about it actually in all your talks. Um, yes. <laughs> Exactly. So, in in how has the Rwandan youth specifically changed from post genocide mm -hmm. until like now? Uh, that's a or, hard question. Has it changed? I, I we still have a lot of work to do as youth in terms of reconciliation. Uh -huh. But we've done a lot of work because bef during the genocide, it was the youth that picked up the machines. Right? Yes. People my age, your age, were the ones who said let's kill other people yeah. and today um, we're just like oh thank goodness I'm not like that mm -hmm. but we need to move from there and say no like now let's also welcome everybody else mm -hmm. and then move from there and say let's build the country yeah. you know so it has to be gradual uh, and we cannot experience that growth if we do not um, talk about the pain mm -hmm. and if we do not talk about the trauma we have a lot of intergenerational trauma in yeah. this country um, that everybody chooses to be quiet about um, yeah. having been very young during the genocide and not even present in the country every time we talk about trauma people say oh come on i have one arm i have i have no eye or something yeah. and they minimize the pain of the youth mm -hmm. whereas it's very real so how do we um talk about their trauma and create a platform where they say, watching my mom like this mm. made me like this. Yeah. And we say, oh, that's okay. That's valid. That's valid, you know? yeah. It's all that. Uh, have, you, have you been able to find like a platform or at least like-minded people like you who are, who are willing to talk about yeah. the trauma? Yeah? Because we don't, at least on the internet, they're not there. I mean, and, and maybe like right. outside of Rwanda, it's, it's really not yeah. prevalent. Yes. Yeah. It's very polarized still. It's yeah. like if you're talking about another version that's not the common version of the, of mm -hmm. the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi, people are afraid that you're about to say something wrong. Mm. You know, they're like, it's like they're just anticipating something to blow up. Yeah. Um, so what we started doing was um, talking about international intergenerational trauma. We mm -hmm. did very exclusive events, very exclusive, <laughs> you know, and, and we would say, do you guys think this is okay? Um, you know, what pains do you have? What are your grieving methods? Mm -hmm. What are your healing methods? And w w what was the target audience in this? The target thing? audience was people who were between 2 to 12. Oh, that's, uh, that's so people who are currently like 26 okay. to 35, mm -hmm. they're the ones who came. Okay. Um, and what is your real life today? Watching because yeah. people still are growing up with people who say you can't have a friend like this in yeah. my house. So, as a person who's growing up in such a household, mm -hmm. how does that affect you? Yeah. It, does it make it easy for you to go out there and have this kind of, you know, different friends, yeah. you know? So we we had two events so far. Mm -hmm. um, the bigger one was 80 people, so that was still small. And then the smaller one was about 25 yeah. people. And, and it was just, I'm struggling with this. I'm really, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's have a quick break and then yes. we can move places because it's raining again. <laughs> Welcome to Rwanda! Right. Welcome back uh, ladies and gentlemen. We just moved places if you're hearing this because of the rain, rain season I guess. Um, anyway, so uh, moving on to maybe a, a bit more of a lighter subject. Yes. Let's talk about relationships. Woo! 
Yes! <laughs> okay, at least yes. you're excited about it. Uh, right. Yeah, like you being pro-women and like you said, being, yes. doing your research uh, yes. around society and finding that women are not positioned well, just to keep it softly, um, and also being in a relationship. Are you in a relationship right now? Okay, let me just put it <laughs> even more vaguely. Do you like the opposite sex? Of course! Uh -huh. okay. well, so, of course about it. Cause now, of course. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah, well, I don't know. We're asking. People don't know. No, yeah, I, I am in a, in a relationship right now. So, so do you find that um, when you are like in a relationship with a, with a guy? Uh, yes. Yes. And the guy is not... Is the guy uh, as, uh, let me say, feminist as you? Or um, do you find that you have to you know, upgrade his education knowledge about society, this woman? I don't have time to date people who, who are, are trying to oppress me. Yeah. Who has time? <laughs> you know, um, and also like op op oppression, right? It, it's a heavy word, yeah. but it's such a small thing that shows itself every day. Yeah, you know, so exactly. I've been in the dating scene for the last I don't know how many years, mm -hmm. and uh, for instance, on the first date, you can tell that you're not going to be with this person. You're not even going to pick up the phone. Yeah. In the after this person leaves, I've been in dates where people on the first date would say, "Oh, so um, I need to come to your house and check out your cooking." Yeah. And I'm like, "Do I owe you that, honey? Like, <laughs> do you know me like that?" Yeah. Or someone who said uh, after a first date said. You earn too much money. Like, would you be willing to quit your job if I mm. was to marry you? I was like, how about I take the bill and I see myself out? You know? Yeah. Like, what are you talking about? It's not even a question. So, w when when feminists say oppression, a lot of people think we're talking about people who are like hitting us mm -hmm. all night. Uh, n no, you know, like yeah. it's just really like, am I in your eyes? Am I? A human being as well. Yeah. Or am I your prize? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we did touch on a touchy subject, I guess, about what's going on about you know the male and female roles in in, in relationships mm -hmm. nowadays that women are making the same even more money than men. So the gender roles are kind of like reversing at home. Yes. And so do you do you encounter those kind of struggles yourself, being like a successful young London woman? It makes me sad. Um, I think uh, one of the things that really make me really sad about this is because men were brought up in a very narrow way. Uh -huh. you know, part of the reasons why I'm grateful to be a woman is I was at least given a little bit more headspace. Yeah. So men are told you can't express. You are provider and protector. Mm -hmm. Okay? And head and decision maker. So then, okay, you're, you're pumped up, you know, you're a provider, protector, decision maker, and then all of a sudden you marry someone very young, and then life happens, and then they, you guys get to a point, yeah. you're able to hire KK Security or ISCO, I don't know the security guards these days, uh, she's able to buy herself everything she wants, and, mm -hmm. and even more and buy you something that you want as well and then all the definition crumble yeah. and you're like who am i anymore because you were not given a bit more yeah. as to what your identity as a male should look like yeah. so a lot of men are struggling with this mm -hmm. they're like what am i if i'm not ahead so then they want to exert power by physical violence mm -hmm. they want to to express that power with either distancing themselves because they're like okay, what in the world am I? And then that's where you start hearing people like, oh, I need you to quit your job. Yeah, exactly. Because that's the only way they would come back to be provider protected. But how do you deal with that? Because knowing that, yeah, I guess guys have their own struggles growing up that yeah. you miss taught, I guess. Yes, you, 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 you meet a guy who's an adult, he's been like this for the last, I don't know, 10, 20 years maybe. And you find that he has a good heart, but he's just yes. has this baggage. Yes. How do you deal with that in a, I guess? Um, so, I'm, uh, I'm a very strong mental health advocate, yeah. very, very strong mental health advocate. You don't, a lot of people still have stigma, especially black-skinned people, mm -hmm. um, to go and open up about your business yeah. to somebody else. So then, but are you learning about it? 
are mm -hmm. you learning about your own self? Mm -hmm. Or have you grown? Mm -hmm. Have you bought into all these lies and said that's that's the way it is? Yeah. So I ask my my people or my people that I'm potentially trying to look into dating, mm -hmm. like. How, what steps have you started doing? So, for instance, I'm not going to date someone who doesn't embrace information. So the only information they have is I scroll, scroll through Twitter and, or I read uh, the New Times once in a while, but I don't dig deeper. So what am I doing? You yeah. know, um, it, it's, it's a matter of um, people need to do the same, their own work, right? It's yeah. 2019, there's so much research, there's mm -hmm. so much out there yeah and for the for the guy for the guy side you know because there is like this fear i think you also talked about it in one of your podcasts yeah. about, about successful women emasculating men yes um some men are afraid of that you know um what, what is your message to the guys side like listen if you're afraid of being emasculated yeah. that means you didn't build your male identity uh -huh. Strongly enough, yeah? yeah. If 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 my sneezing or if my talking back to you or if my calling you out in public as my date emasculates you, then where is your identity in the first place? Mm -hmm. So build it. You know, read about what kind of man you want to be. Mm -hmm. Read about what kind of insecurities you have and start overcoming them in your daily life. Mm -hmm. I had it. All women have insecurities because they're. They're, they're sexualized mm -hmm. and you have all these fashion industries, modeling indus industries, food industries that make women say, this is the perfect women. Mm -hmm. And if women have been able to build an identity around and beyond what they call a good woman, mm -hmm. what keeps males, um, men, from trying to build their I identity? So if a man has a very fragile mm -hmm. ego, mm -hmm. Uh, let's say we're on a date and my friends come and you say they say something kind of kind of dumb and I say hey that's really dumb yeah. and then they go home and they're like oh you didn't I'm yeah. like, <laughs> like you said you saying something dumb means you need to improve your character doesn't mean I I, I don't like you anymore mm -hmm. you know if you're so fragile to take that as a uh, then what am I doing with you man like honestly <laughs> yeah <laughs> do this yeah. you know. Yeah, I guess, but it's not easy, I guess, because one of the difficult part of it is uh, finding out, uh, learning this about yourself, yes, that you have this yes. fragile ego yes. and, uh, and how to deal with it. And when you're in a relationship, it becomes even more complicated. I think pride mixed with ignorance is the biggest killer yeah. of men. But you see what I mean? Like, if you're ignorant and you couple it up with pride, that means every time there's an event happening, Mm -hmm. Pride takes you over. It doesn't allow you to be curious or to learn. It doesn't yeah. allow you to, to improve. Mm -hmm. You're just going to say no. So you have a lot less chances than a person who's humble enough to say, let me check this out, let me check this book out, let me check this podcast out. So pride with ignorance really hurts men because already by birth they're given a much stronger ego. <laughs> by stronger, I mean fragile, uh, an untouchable ego. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. Talking more about the the uh, the you know successful women with success later, sooner or later comes money, and one of your views about money is that money gives uh, women a voice. Yes. What do you mean by that? Uh, women. Anyway, <laughs> I get very excited about these topics. Um, so when I started my organization, I was 22, yeah? mm -hmm. um, and, and it was very fragile. Any time this organization could fall apart, right? So I remember very vividly <clears throat> how dependent I was on everybody around me. Mm -hmm. So you, can, you had so much freedom to come into my life and say, I need you to change the color of your walls, mm -hmm. or I need you to change your logo, and, you know? And potentially, I might help you. So I was so, so, I had no personality. The people, and bigger people would say, change this about the vision of your organization, or this and that, mm -hmm. you see? And I had to, because I didn't have the backup to say no. And there's no stronger backup than financial backup. 
Mm. As much as people say, oh, my crew is better than yours, that's dumb because your crew is not going to help you pay rent, you see. Mm -hmm. But if I can pay rent, and if I can pay salaries, and if I can pay my own joy in life, mm -hmm. I have a bigger voice to say, I don't agree, you yeah. see. So the first time I learned about financial power was when I had to cut off my first big strategic partner. Okay. We sat down on a meeting and they really downgraded me. Oh my gosh, oh, Africans this and this, black people this. And then I said at some point, I was like, you're not going to talk like this with my team. Mm -hmm. Because I had reached to a point where I was like, even if they walk away, rent will be paid. Mm -hmm. And then I went outside and I was like, how much more do I need this in my personal life? Yeah. So even men who are trying to look into empowering women, not I'm not talking about financial handouts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you say, you know what, I'm a feminist ally, I would say, okay, then now buy your stuff from a woman. You mm -hmm. know, if you're going to buy a shirt, but you because you know where you're at, she yeah. needs a lot more financial help to yeah. have the same volume of voice that you have. You know, mm -hmm. so being intentional and say, okay, that restaurant was founded by a woman. Let me go. Not handouts. Handouts. It becomes transactional. Yeah. You still have the power to say, sleep with me. Yeah. You still retain your power. Mm -hmm. Kind of like our relationship with the West as Africa. Yeah. They come and they, you know, through yeah. USF, through all this. And then, and then it's like, oh, now I need you to not build this hospital. Or after, I mean, a long time ago, they said, for you to have this aid, mm -hmm. we need you to build at least five churches. Mm. We need you to force people to be Catholic or something like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's what now we're doing, you know, men can do in, in, in our daily lives. They're like, oh, I'll pay your bill at the restaurant. That's not empowerment. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, no, but that's, you are very right about it because it is um, money. There's a saying they say when the money speaks, everybody listens. So I, that's why I go by it. Um, but you being a successful founder, co-founder, CEO, it comes with money, financial money, and you, you know, and it, yes, <laughs> ching ching, ching ching. And how, do you find that somehow, like um, other other than giving you a voice to say no to certain things, it has changed your character? No. It has refined who I always was. Yeah. yeah. So again, another thing that we struggle with now, this is very specific to Africans as people, right? Yeah. We have crab mentality for days, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say, and and because I have been a visible media, visibly in the media kind of person, mm -hmm. every time I have like let's say a grant or a partnership, people say, oh. Oh my gosh, I can't wait for her to, you know, cults come through and they're like, oh, I need you to pay uh, for my school fees. I need you to, because there's no belief of, oh my gosh, I need some of that. You invite yourself yeah. my own resources, yeah. right? Um, <laughs> yes. So with that said, um, you are perceived as selfish mm -hmm. if you focus on growing your thing. Mm -hmm. And you are perceived as someone who has changed you know because they, they it's, it's an ego thing it can be as well you mm -hmm. know like oh i can no longer talk to her the same way because yeah. you know what now i'm exposed to other things you yeah. know let's say i went to transform africa and i was lucky to, to talk to someone yeah. and they really challenged me my circle is changing and if I start calling you on your things, you'll attribute that to money. But I'm just growing as a human being. Yeah. You see, so <coughs> money changes people. Well, and, it and, just shows and who they are. Going back to the days when you did not have a lot of money, mm -hmm. when you had this idea, when you said, okay, let me try this, let me do this. Yes. Like, how did you make your first few money to kind of to have it as a growth, as water for your plant, for your company yes. to grow? Right, the struggle. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm one of those people who love talking about the struggle I had because I had a struggle. <laughs> so, okay, so I worked, I, I graduated from university in 2014. Yeah. Soon after that, I graduated in June, July, I started a job in a local organization here. Yeah. And saving has always been part of who I am. Mm -hmm. I think from it, the time I was a kid. Um, I used to say, okay, so if I save this money during holidays, you know, you have pocket money, the parents give you, 
And then you're like, I'm not going to eat it all so I can have two weeks of transportation back in the holidays. Yeah. You know, so I don't have to say, oh, mom, I'm going to visit my friend. Can you give me some money? I would say, at least for two weeks, I'm good. Um, so that's kind of how I grew up. I don't know why I'm like that. I have no idea. But then I started saving on my salary. And then all of a sudden, I had this idea that I thought it was good. So I went into it. Mm-hmm. with that savings yeah it sounds like a lot but that savings bought me three chairs and a table and a computer <laughs> and internet connection for a month that was it right humble beginnings humble beginnings and a friend of mine said you know what i have an empty room in my office why don't you use it yeah. um and then i was like okay so now what do i do yeah. and one of the things i had to do was I had voice. I, I was a voiceover artist. I was a photographer on the side. I was a designer on the side. I was everything. Mm. I was I was legit everything on the side. So mm. if you need if you need a chair, I'm like yeah yeah yeah, yeah make chairs, you know. <laughs> and that's yeah. how we covered rent. That's how we covered salaries at the mm-hmm. beginning. And now we're here. And now you have an uh, employee of seven people, I believe. Uh, with the part-time ones. With the part-time ones, so yeah. So full-time we're five. Yeah. So how does it feel to be an employee of seven people who are counting on you to on pay the their money. salaries? It's exhausting at times. Yeah. Um, but it also is such a source of confidence because yeah. sometimes when days are hard, I'm like, you did that. You yeah. Know? Especially, I have days that are hard. I have days where my self-esteem is the lowest and I'm like ah wait a minute you know you know yeah. you managed to to grow a thing mm-hmm. don't worry you know so it's it's been really um, really really helpful and that's why I'm like for women even in the family you see in Rwanda we have a lot of age respect ageism mm-hmm. I would say um, oh you're still young you're still this and they don't want to listen to you they don't want to engage with you your uncles and aunties right mm-hmm. And when you've proven something, you enter, man. You enter these meetings and you're like, I'll, I'll sit. And yeah. they say, oh, you want to understand? I'm like, tell me what I want to understand. I pay yeah. taxes every year. <laughs> and it's not even little taxes, you yeah. see? So it's created a sense of respect that I'm forever grateful for. And it's created respect, I believe, that all the people, because, at least those in my surroundings, are more respectful of young people because they see, oh, if she could do that, that means we can't disrespect other young people because they probably have the same thing on yeah. their side. It is interesting, the ageism, it is something that is very, very prevalent in the Rwandese culture, to be exact. Um, like, if you're just, like, you're young, they, they don't even want to listen to you. I'm like, ha? Huh? Like, you yeah, know, exactly. uh, but maybe even for you, you starting a, a company at a very young age and also looking very young looking 12 <laughs> exactly you, you you do talk about this about this kind of like age challenge yes now you've been in business for a couple of years now you've matured uh, you look maybe not 12 maybe like 14 now eh? improvements really 14 <laughs> <laughs> no. so um is the is do you still ha- feel do you have the age challenge mm-hmm. uh, until now mm-hmm. yeah very very much i have so much because i feel like when people don't know me I look like I am just graduating from high school, Mm -hmm. and that's sad. (laughs) Um, So, but even beyond that, when I go for partnerships and investing investor meetings, they they look at me like, especially as a woman, a lot of things I hear is, "Oh, you'll get married one day and you'll forget about all this." Mm. You see, like. It's like that's where that's, they can't invest in someone who potentially can get married, especially as a woman, mm. because then they will forget about all this. Ah, so they think you're gonna like so that's the drop one everything heard, and then yeah. go for the for the Take wife, the man. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so then that's the thing I've, I keep hearing. People yeah. are afraid of investing in us, in my company, because I'm not married. Mm-hmm. So maybe if I was married and I was working as a married woman, they would say, "Oh, she's she's decided." not mm. to take care of her husband and so you know mm. so anyway so it's 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 quite another thing i hear about ageism um is why aren't you trying to look for a husband it's really all like rotating around mm. why am i not trying to look for a husband and trying to do all these things mm. and I, how do you answer that mm, yeah 
audience. You, I guess, might just you don't. You just show them. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I, I, it's very sad. Yeah. I don't answer that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, but it it has not deterred you anyway. Yeah. Yet. No. Not, no? Not yet. Yeah. A um, little bit. <laughs> a little bit, but. When I have a very serious meeting, sometimes I call my sister. And I'm like, Bruh, you need to help my face. Yeah. So she, you know, sometimes she really, you know, tries to pimp me up. Ah. But I don't need. To, I shouldn't need to do that. You I'm shouldn't saying. need to. Okay. Yeah. I shouldn't need to like. So what does she make you look older? I mean, there's some haircuts that make me look slightly older. Ah. Okay. You know, oh there's gosh, maybe yeah. like glasses. <laughs> sometimes work, but they don't. Yeah. Um, I don't know, you know, maybe when she does that, I feel I look older. Yeah. I just have a bit more confidence. Then you yeah, maybe behave older and therefore yeah, you know, you're you And I wear heels and I look ah, like. Ah, no, heels always work. Heels make so, like 10 years old. But it shouldn't be then. But no, yeah. okay, you know, it's, it's funny because like, the way it's, okay, call it funny, maybe it's not funny, but. Um, to me, it's striking because I know from the world, of, like in America, the CV, it's like uh, the VC, I must say. Mm. It's usually like the young up and coming entrepreneurs are the ones they're really looking for, actually. They, they, they are looking for the next Steve Jobs, they're looking for the next uh, Mark Zuckerberg, who are like young yeah. and, and found their passion, yeah. their, their, their gig. But you here, maybe being a woman, being in Africa, being in Rwanda, you are like on the other side of that coin, yes, and yes, it's, yes, it's, yes. It's, it's working against you, actually. Yes, okay. it definitely is. Okay, no worries. Maybe the sun is gonna turn and it's gonna come to Definitely. this side as well one day. And then, Very hopeful. Yeah, yeah. One of the last interesting topics, I guess, I did wanna talk about it before we wrap up is um, uh, is, is talking about faith. Uh, why I find this interesting because uh, all of Rwanda is believes you know believes in something. Yeah, like very little people you can find that they're like, no, I don't believe in anything, man. I'm, I'm just there. Oh my gosh, it's it's a very small number. Of people. Yeah, exactly. They, I don't think they would even come up if you like ask them, like, mm, they'll be quiet. They'll be, be like, nah, yeah. no, but I don't know. You have an interesting thing. You say, like, you you are, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, a secular humanist. Yes, that was the word, yeah. Where did you get that? <laughs> I've been doing my research. <laughs> huh? So can you explain to, to what that entitles? Right. Uh, so secular humanist is just a more polite word that we that I'm using yeah. to say that I don't think there's enough evidence that mm -hmm. there's something out there. Yes. Okay. Evidence is probably there. Uh -huh. Anyway, you know to be kind because you know this yeah. is people's centers, you know, like they're people who center their entire existence on a deity. Yeah. Um, so secular humanist is a really just like non confrontational way to say atheist. Yeah. But this is what I find so interesting because in all of your all other talks and attitude, mm. you kind of like, yo, I'm like this. This yeah. is how I am. This is me. Yeah, you know, like, okay. Best believe. Uh, yeah. It's all about you, I'm just being me. And here I find you kind of like, yes, humbling I, down. I, I, I was very heavily, heavily, heavily on my way of becoming a pastor. Oh, really? In 20, I think 2018 was my life goal to quit all this and, and be a missionary. Oh, that's so, like last year, man. That's last year, so the year before that, that's when something happened, and I was like, and it just kind of disconnected heavily, okay. and then I started the journey, so the, the, from 2017 into right now, mm -hmm. I started the journey of dropping, basically, dropping and, and joining mm -hmm. knowledge, yes. you know, and um, the reason why I've been very, very sent, and that's actually... The genesis, it's been the genesis of every other belief mm -hmm. I've had, you see. Um, so the reason why I'm still very like tiptoeing around it is because um, people, people are trying to live, <laughs> you know, people are trying, anyway, I don't know, I don't even know, I need to think about why I tiptoe around this, but yeah, uh, yeah. I need to think about it. Yeah, it's, it's. It's striking. It's like you're moving this one direction, and then all of a sudden you're like, mm. and all of a sudden I'm like, let's be moderate. I'm yeah. not trying. To, I uh, when I talk about religion and, and faith, um, religion for me is very mm -hmm. different from faith, and faith is also very different from 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 dogma. Mm -hmm. I don't know if uh, you follow me. So, for instance, I am heavily against religion. Mm -hmm. Heavy, okay. But then when it comes to faith and dogma. It's, it's what I call people's centers, right? Yeah. There's someone who say, 
Buddhism is what makes me feel whole as yeah. a human being. And then Hinduism and then Islam and then and then mm -hmm. Christianity. Yeah. So then I learned to respect that because nothing yeah. makes me feel I'm also one of them in a circle. Yeah. No, you know, one of the also other reasons why it's so interesting because um, maybe outside of Rwanda, when, when let me say, if you come from a country where it's less religious, mm -hmm. where, where the religion is not so much in, like on the foreground, yeah. um, you find people becoming more, yeah, they call it, I'm not religious, I'm spiritual kind of thing. Right. Yeah, 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 so yeah. they feel like there is a sense of higher being, yeah. they feel it, yeah. but it is not this. It is it, like, it's something else. It's something else and yeah. Why it's interesting because you being a woman and being also in Rwanda, where like like you said, society kind of looks down upon you, and then having this kind of like opinion kind of makes you stand out in a, in a way. Very very stand out. Yeah. So I was wondering if you had like any kind of encounters around it where you had to, to Are you serious? Yes. defend defend it uh, heavily, or because yes. you talk about it with family, with people, close friends right. that that has influenced everything. So. So that's where I become radical because um, in terms of radical, in terms of, so a lot of people, when they look at you not having faith and mm -hmm. uh, not being spiritual, they think you're a sad, low life, unreliable, mm -hmm. I can't have a business, I can't have a life. I, wait, she's not smoking drugs. She, you know, like there's all this package that mm -hmm. is attached mm -hmm. that if you're outside of religion, this is the package you have. Yeah. So it has taken me a journey to defend, hey, I'm still a reliable person, I'm still gonna, my yes is still gonna be yes, my mm -hmm. no is still gonna be no, and this and that. But you have to heavily defend that because you no longer have the etiquette or the tag yeah. that says you have it. Yeah. So with family, um, with family, again, that's where I told you that financial freedom really helps yeah. because there's no threat that can really touch me mm -hmm. that heavily. Um, so, for instance, if an uncle says, "I'll kick you out of my," uh, I'll, I'll 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 tell your mom to kick you out. <laughs> I'll be like, "Honey, like, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I can afford my house. You know what I mean? Like, because of those threats, they also are forced to come into a same conversation mm -hmm. because they can no longer say, "Oh, I lo I'll lock you mm -hmm. out of the house. I'll do all these threatening things that will bring me to my knees." Mm -hmm. um, now, because they don't have that at their advantage, they've had to sit down and present their case and listen to my case. Mm -hmm. So it's been very helpful. And uh, friends, I've lost quite a bit. Mm. Uh, a lot because I was up there, man. I was, I was preaching, <laughs> yeah. Thinking, so, you huh? probably had the following people believed I had in you, a very heavy following, yeah. very heavy following. I've been in a lot of these mega churches here on their stage, not just attending, mm -hmm. you see. And and it's like a massive, massive disappointment to them because mm -hmm. I was their poster child, mm -hmm. you know, like, yes. oh, she's, she prays here and she met Obama. Would have been oh. such a nice story for them to tag on, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. now all of a sudden it's no longer there. Mm -hmm. I don't credit their deity anymore. Yeah. And they're like disappointed. And on top of that, they've been trained to believe that I'm going to burn in eternity. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, Camera went off, man. Luckily, we got still the audio going on. Okay. Right. Yes. So, so they've been trained to believe that I'm going to like burn in eternity, mm -hmm. for eternity, and they have this view of we need to save her. So they invade my space sometimes, and you know, yeah. you know try sneaky ways of trying to get me back. And I'm like, that that doesn't exist, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so it's been quite a lot to navigate. Yeah. But I navigate it very honestly. So when the question comes up, I'm never like, oh, I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. No, you know, I don't try to identify as one anymore. Yeah. Um, I don't try to say that I go to church anymore. Mm -hmm. I used to, when I deconverted, every Sunday I took my mom's car, drove around the city. Mm -hmm. For the same hours I would be in church and then come back home, come back home. at the end. Oh, and wow. Now I just, she's like, you're still home? I'm like, yeah, I'm still home. Mm -hmm. It's been a year. She wakes up every Sunday. She's like, you're still home. I'm like, I'm yeah. still home. I'm still home. <laughs> yeah. You know, so it's it, been a journey. Is that hard? Like just saying to your mom, I'm still home? At the beginning it was because I thought, because um, even personally, mm -hmm. you were told that people who are not in this box are evil people. 
they're sexually immoral, mm-hmm. they're thieves, they're murderers. And so the first couple months, I was like, it's coming, I'm going to kill someone. I'm, you know, like, I felt like yeah. I was, it was, it was going to prove itself to be true. I was, I was going to kill someone or I was going to, to really harm someone because I was told I have nothing that stops me. Anymore. Yeah. So then when I started realizing, wait, what? Like, I didn't change. I'm still coming to it. I still have the same routine. Mm -hmm. I still have the same love for people. I'm okay. I haven't killed anyone. You know, or I haven't been uh, sexually immoral, or Mm -hmm. I haven't been... Whatever those tags that you're so scared of, you're like, oh, wait, what? And so I started embracing that identity. So it wasn't not just fear of what the other person would think. It was also my own fear. So I would still say, I'm a Christian, to, to protect myself from... Yeah, like, exactly, from, from the from mess. Killing someone. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I thought I would kill someone. Anyway, Yeah. it, it was crazy. It's yeah. been a crazy journey. All right, thank you. Before we wrap up, um, any last advice you have for a young girl who's like out there watching, listening to this? who has similar struggles, something that, you, that you've been going through, um, debating to make the jump, the pledge, to do what, what you are doing with. You, yeah. What advice would you give for her or him who's uh, aspiring um, to be you? I would really say one of the advice, like read, knowledge is power. Like When we hear that on Twitter, it mm-hmm. sounds quite like a nice tweet, mm-hmm. but it really is power. Um, Make sure every week that you, you've learned something new. You know? yeah. uh, do not keep the same circle. If you're hanging out with people like, oh, did you watch that movie last night? But, but that's really good. Balance it out with mm-hmm. someone who challenges you. Mm-hmm. In the same week, right? Yeah. Uh, make sure you stretch yourself. I, I really would say, and we're out here, you know, like we're just a phone call away to have a conversation. And even like see or people you're super scared of, not just CEOs, but like people you admire. You can want to sit with an imam and say, I, want, I have questions. You can want to, but just take that step of yeah. risk and, and make those calls, make those phone calls. Join, listen, feed your curiosity. Join those events that you say, oh, I, I hate it. If you feel like you hate it, that means it's calling you, by the way. To, to, to sit in that hate mm-hmm. and, and see for yourself, why do I hate this, mm-hmm. you know? Um, it's calling you, so, so feed your curiosity, feed your brain, challenge yourself mm-hmm. intentionally. Um, and then, um, just information, man. Like, use Twitter to your advantage. Like, if I, I use Twitter, if I want to learn about female mu- genital mutilation, mm. it's just a hashtag. Oh. Follow it, see what the human stories are. If it's in entrepreneurship, you know, hashtags help us to create our own communities. Mm-hmm. What are you interested about? Mm-hmm. Uh, you're interested about carpentry. You know, like just don't use the, ha- the, the social media to see the, the fashion trends that are out there. Oh, yeah. fashion trends are important, <laughs> but balance yourself out. Okay. You see? Yeah. So I think, I think that's what I would say. Mm. Very powerful. Dominique, Sounds. thank you very much. Yes. Yes, <laughs> lovely talking to you. Yes. And I will see you next time Please. when I see you. Please do see me next time. Alright. Yes. And... Can I do this? No, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's harder. It has to be like a really clap. Yes. Gosh, that really hurts. <laughs> you don't have Guys, would you like one of Dominic's signed books? This one I particularly like. I like the illustration a lot. I bought one for my little nephew. Even though I cannot talk, he really showed me his body language that he loved it. Anyway, if you like a copy of this, Uh, I'm giving away for free. All you have to do is follow me on Twitter and give me like a comment about the giveaway, of course. Then I know you came from the video. Of course, you have to subscribe on my YouTube channel. And if you don't have a Twitter, just follow me on Instagram. I hope you have Instagram. Uh, And write also a comment on the Instagram post, something like, I don't have a Twitter. Uh, All right, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Check out Dominic's contact below this video. And if you have any other questions, just let me know. And let me know what you think of the interview. Or if you have any other questions, leave them, leave them in the comment section below. All right? I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.